right? So I want you to think of me as the donkey. <laughs> because I want to talk on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of businesses who don't want to make trust and personal data the center of what they do. They're not trying to do grand analytics. They're not Google and they're Facebook, but they have to comply with the GDPR. So I'm going to talk about ways in which actually they can reduce the work they have to do and still comply with the GDPR. So it is, unfortunately, as a law, it is the stick and not the carrot. So we can hope to see how we can turn this into the carrot and make this a positive point, as Jeff was saying at the beginning. But there's, no, there's nothing in the GDPR that says you're going to get $20 million if you do it well, 20 million euros. You can just pay it out. So we need to see how to shrink that stick. Uh, and looking at, say, a business says, what do I do? I've just got to comply. What can I do? I've got legal liability. I've got operational costs. I've got reputational risk. And in summary, but broadly interpreted, the GDPR gives the answer, uh, which is data minimization. And we know that the GDPR is not really a reglement that says you do this, you do that, you do the other. It's a set of principles. It, and it aims to promote risk management. And if you look at the list of the principles, apart from lawful, fair, and transparent, which are general principles, nearly all the others are about risk management and minimizing data and minimizing risk and minim improving security to minimize risk. So, there are, this presentation is very simple because I'm going to say the same thing several times. <laughs> you basically, there are three types of minimization and they can be taken together. So, one is to uh, minimize the personal data hold, held. Actually, we can jump to the third one here. Minimize identifiable personal data, identified and identifi identifiable, and minimize the data governance. Uh, which is a concept I'm sure you understand, but has maybe not been talked much in the context. So uh, there was a company, where I showed this slide on the slide before, in the UK had 700,000 email addresses called Weatherspoons. They just decided to throw away the whole email database, the whole contact database. They said, it's under the GDPR, it's too dangerous for us to have, to have data. So that is the extreme end of minimization. They're given to give up completely on any personal data. but. Uh, you know, data is toxic. It is a risk. So one point is you want to uh, get that data down to the minimum, and then you want to make it as less, less toxic as possible, and then you want to minimize the degree to which you, as the business, are responsible. As I say, the same three points I'm making and continuing to repeat. In detail, I think we all know that minimizing data only for a particular purpose, never get anything you don't need, uh, delete it when you don't need it anymore. Uh, so those, that's the basic minimized data at the simple, uh, simple interpretation. Uh, the second point, if I get the right arrow here, I seem to have uh, got a frozen screen. Ah, oh, okay, I can see, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just press escape and then I'm out. Okay, the next one is minimize the identifiability. And I'm basically picking up on what Yusia has been talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about, though, in the context of the business analytics, mass data, where you can have things which are anonymous or close to being anonymous. I'm talking about when you need to do uh, transactions. You need to be able to recontact with that same individual. And so pseudonymization of some form or other is the only, only possible thing. And a range of techniques can come under this definition of pseudonymization that's in the GDPR. And then the third point, minimizing responsibility, uh, reducing the self-governance, trying to uh, get rid of the stress that comes with being responsible. And this, I'm saying, uh, can best be done if we split up the governance of the data. So any business, uh, which can be on the left-hand side of this picture. Uh, if it can work with an intermediary who takes along a load a lot of responsibility uh, between the intermediary, between the, the business and the end user. 
Again, saying the same point, less data, less identifiable data, and less responsibility. Now, just imagine that you give your data uh, to Donald Trump. <laughs> Wouldn't you be happier if somebody else had the keys, like the keys to the nuclear weapon, right? <laughs> So this is the thing, you need to split up, for pseudonymization to work really effectively, you need to split up the governance. And you can also do the data enclave principle, you call on the data from a third party only when it's needed. It also could be reinforced through contractual rules that go beyond the strict GDPR compliance. So I'm giving you a kind of rough diagram. There's a, this is a whole gamut of solutions, it's not a black and white thing. So you can decide the level of anonymity which interests you, uh, the uh, degree of management uh, which you want to take. But the less anonymous, the more identifiable, and the more governance, the greater the risk. Uh, so there's kind of like, you might categorize that as risks, as you can see the presentations downloaded later. There are legal uh, benefits of pseudonymization, but they're not black and white, because as Jeff said, it was really satisfying just one group. But in Austria, it was a recognized pseudonymization categorically reduced your risk, your, sorry, the penalties you could pay. You have to build up the illegal argument for the various clauses to see why that's an advantage. But it, the bottom line is it does reduce your risk. And there are opportunities to offload responsibility. So here's a checklist you can look at later. If you are trying to comply with the GDPR, these are a set of the key things you have to do. If they're in green, I'm saying you can completely give them away to somebody else. If they're in yellow or orange, whatever color it's showing, that means they can be shared in some way. And if they're in red or this color here, that means, sorry, you have to do those yourself. And uh, when it comes to consent management, one of the greens, you can take away nearly all the consent. Just checking the time. <laughs> Uh, you can take away nearly all the applications of consent management and hand it off to a third party. Uh, you can hand off subject act access requests and all that kind of extra effort and responsibility. Uh, but uh, some of them might need to call back to the actual uh, controller, the business holding the data, in order to uh, provide the full answer for users. You can do things like impersonal login, and even Facebook has done this. They call it anonymous login. It means the business you're connecting to doesn't know your name, but we, Facebook, know everything. Right? <laughs> so that's kind of like the anonymous, totally non-anonymous uh, solution. But the same principle can be applied to an intermediary who is committed uh, to protecting the identification information of the users. Uh, you can do Emails, you can have your subscribers on your database not ever know their names because, again, you just send out via a, a pseudonymous identity uh, to the end user. And one of the things I forgot to mention when it comes to pseudonymous identities, as I say, it's a whole gamut of techniques, but one of them is temporal. So sometimes it could be pseudonymous, you only have a particular identity, but it only lasts for one transaction, and then next time it's a different identity. If you need a continuous relationship with your customer, then it needs to have a long-term uh, connection, which is a bit more risky. You can do even go to purchasing and have purchasing checkouts uh, and buy products uh, because you don't need to keep the information. Like a payment gateway now, if you go and buy a product, it transfers you to a payment gateway. Similarly, uh, a checkout on a product could transfer you to a personal data gateway which can be a PIMS, of course, can be various technical implementation. So, that seems to have come back. Uh, coming back to the conclusion, uh, yes, this is a stick, but eventually it becomes a carrot, because uh, by you can reduce all your risk, but you're making it better for the individuals at the same time. And so, it uh, fits well with any kind of human-centric uh, solution for data, and of course, you can present that as a solution that's come through to your customers. And I've done my job, I think, of uh, going back to seeing a very happy donkey uh, with this solution. I also seem to have uh, caught up a bit of our time. Uh, but I want to tell you, I give you permission to communicate with me by my business email address. As long as you don't send me mass emails, you have my permission to process my personal data. Thank you.